So the other day I came across an old diary of mine from 2018 and I found an old bush map I had drawn when I was trying to find a gold mine. So this is a bit of a hot mess here. This is just a bush map. So I've gone through and made a nice diagram. So we'll go through this information and I'll explain to you how I found a gold mine. Uh, this is uh, dish number two on the Sunbaker Reef, which I just discovered. I was in this area because of my research. Now these results are parts per billion. These lines are 400 meters apart. So if we look over here, so it's looking pretty dead to the west here. You can see that the numbers just fade away. There's not much happening here. Two, 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 couple threes, two parts per billion. Now here's a four, three, there's a nine and so here's some good results here 34 couple 11s a 15 this is going to the west well it looks like something's happening over here there could be a strike forming here look it's 42 10 14 so you can see it looks like there's something running in the bedrock here these are a series of hills and there was quartz on the ground so we'll come back to this map a bit later after we show a bit more of what we did. I'll show you where the gold mine was actually found. I'll give you the tip. It was in this area. Okay, so now let's talk about that potholes diagram. And I found an A grammar about here somewhere. A beautiful A grammar on the surface. And that's why I've called this reef the Sunbaker Reef. I walked around, found a couple more bits, so I decided to start chaining. I trained all this area up. Probably took a week. And just in this bit of a run here, I started getting some deep nuggets that were rough. Those rough nuggets told me that the reef was somewhere in this area here. Stage one, loaming program taking samples off the surface. I started a loaming program. So you have to try to make every sample the same, the same length, the same depth, which makes all your samples consistent. It makes them more accurate. So. Now then I like to cut, cut a little bit down, get a little bit of depth. And that's it. Okay, so we have our sample. Put it in and let it soak. And when all the bubbles come out, when it's finished percolating away there, then you know the sample is, is saturated. And then you can start working the, uh, the material to make sure that there's no clay, lumps of clay. And um, and start washing it. Please see the very end of this video if you are interested in watching me wash this dish. And after I loam the surface, which I showed you, it's just a shovel full off the surface. I ascertained that this was my best area here. Now let me say that this is my pothole. So this is like the second stage of the loaming program where I took potholes these are deep holes, basically off the, the bedrock. Mm -hmm. 
every meter, I started taking a sample off the bottom. I dug a hole and I took off the first foot and I just drew that to the side. And I started taking samples off the bedrock. So these samples are numbered. See, here's my legend. So here's the sample number. I counted the colors in each pan and then I wrote a short description. My first sample was here. Sample number one, I got one speck. My second sample was here. I got no color. So then we went over here. Sample number three, I got two specks. Sample number four, I got four specks and they were dull. So they were very dull. And I got a little, little limestone specimen. Sample number five, I got one flake. And then I went, then I went over here. Next sample, sample six. I got four chunks. They were bright, so that was a good clue. Number seven. I got a point. So a point is, you know, several several colors, several fine colors. But more importantly, they were very bright. So that was seven. Number eight's here. Five specks dull. So then I came back up here. I got a nice point. No description here. I got a flake. Ten. Came down. A meter. Sample number eleven. I got three specks. Point. There's a point. Where's number fourteen? Fourteen. I got three chunks. Fifteen. A point. Sixteen point. Bright. See, these are bright. It's very important to look at the luster. You know, you want bright, dull. Bright means they haven't been out of the ground very long. 16. A bright luster indicates the gold has been recently shed from its source, as it has not had time to get stained by the minerals in the soils, such as iron. So you have to examine the luster of the gold that you find in the dish to determine if the gold is dull or bright. 18, another point with bright, and then here's three specks, dull. 21, four specks, two specks. It ascertained at this point that the finest gold and the best gold and the shiniest gold, the brightest gold, seem to be... The best and brightest gold is here, where I've drawn this line around. So I put big quartz rocks on the best results, and as I watched, I could see the wings form just as Sam Cash predicted. The idea is that gold fans out down the hill as it sheds from the reef, you're chasing the spread up the hill, so the big quartz rocks recreate the fan. I started sinking at the point of the arrow that the rocks formed. I cleared all the topsoil away to get to the bedrock. I started opening a hole in the bedrock with my jackhammer, sampling the material as I went by crushing, then washing it. Eureka! I got a tail of gold on my second day. Uh, this is uh, dish number two on the Sunbaker Reef, which I just discovered.
So this was just a tiny enrichment. I detected about two ounces of nuggets and won 50 grams of hard rock gold. The hole ended up being about four feet deep. I'll show you where the gold mine was actually found. I'll give you the tip. It was in this area. Okay, so here's that map. And here's that obvious strike. Like there's something running in the ground here. This is about the right strike. You know, north, northwest. And Sun Maker Reef was found here. So, you know, that could be an indication that there's something running in the ground. It could be a cross fault here. A cross fault, which usually strikes on a 30 degree bearing, may also explain the high 19 ppb result to the west. And most importantly, the research put me in this area and I was able to find something straight away. To do your prospecting at home, on the internet, before you get out in the field. Be able to follow it up, metal detecting, loaming, study your goal when you find it, see how rough it is. That tells you all the clues you need to know to actually see where the goals come from and give you ideas where to look. But the best place to look for gold is in your dish. There's a lot of information in there. So even though this turned out to be a small occurrence, it could have been a big bonanza here. Okay, now here's the bonus bit, washing the loam that I took. Okay, so I like to wear gloves. You know, you work in that muck for a couple hours and your hands get all stained brown. So, this is the way to go. So now we're going to wash the sample. So, make sure everything is free, moving around, any lumps of clay, you know, you can take out any, any large rocks at this stage, but make sure everything's broken down. And then we can start swirling. Swirl. And then you can cut all that stuff out. Swirl with a big rock. So we're looking for one speck of gold, so we have to be fairly consistent and careful, but we know by now the any gold that's in the dish will be at the bottom of the dish. So you can start taking the bigger rocks out. I like to give it a bit of a pan. And we get down to the heavies. You want some nice clean water and move your tail. Start moving your tail. We're classifying the material and at this stage you can cut the bottom of your tail out because that's just the light stuff the goal is going to be the top of the tail at this stage so now we can start looking for any specks and as we shake and move the tail down the side of the dish. Any gold will be at the top. And uh, we should be able to see any gold fairly easily. 
You know, it'll be bright and shiny. And obviously we're looking for a rich gold mine, so, you know, if this was a rich gold mine, this would all be gold. So we wouldn't have to look too carefully to see any gold, because it'd be so much there. So I'm not seeing any gold. You know, let that tail move slowly down, and if there's a speck of gold, you'll see it. Let's have a look. You know, you have to stick your face right in the dish with the sun behind you, but there's nothing in that dish. So we can take another one. 